Thank you, Alistair. And, and we'll have time for some questions after Professor Jeffrey will give him his presentation on vitamin D. So thank you, Glenn. First of all, what a pleasure to come along to such a well-organized meeting. I'm really impressed. Um, I go to meetings regularly with support groups, and this really does take the cake. It's, it's superb, very well done. You're an incredibly difficult audience to actually talk to because you're so incredibly mixed and diverse. Um, we've got a large sort of number of people here that are patients, and they don't have a scientific background, but we've also got some scientists and we've got some, some, some clinicians. So forgive me if I'm patronizing to some and I shoot over the heads of some of you. Um, if I can get 10% in the middle, I'll consider myself a success. Um, my main area of research um, is not in birdshot. It's fundamentally in aging. It's in aging, but it shares a relationship with birdshot because it's in inflammation. And I'm interested in inflammation because inflammation is a problem that all of us over the age of about 45 start to develop. Okay, so the natural aging process is that as we, as we go through life, we generate waste products in our body. And these waste products end up sitting in difficult parts of our body and they cause inflammation. And the inflammation goes round and round in a circuit and the whole thing carries on being self-promoting. So that if we, um, if we look over here, this is a picture familiar to some of you, here we've got uh, deposits in the central retina which are called drusen and they will eventually progress forwards probably towards AMD. But the thing about those deposits is they are very, very inflammatory. And we suffer from systemic inflammation all through our joints, all through our muscles, generally over the age of 30 or 40. Now, that's not a problem. That's not a problem for us in terms of evolution because everybody in this room under normal evolutionary mechanisms, apart from a few young people at the back, will be dead because fundamentally we've evolved to live for 25 to 30 years. For the vast majority of our evolutionary existence, we really should be dead and um, over, over the age that, that, under the age that we are now. Okay, so we've got a problem because we're lingering, we're lingering, we're living, <laughs> we're lingering, we are living much longer than we should do. We really should live for about uh, 25 to 30 years. 35 years. For the vast majority of human evolution, that is how long we've lived until we reach the sort of literally about 3,000 years ago when we build big support mechanisms. Um, but now we're living to about 80 years. So we've got a problem clearing debris. We're building up this debris now into a period of lifespan that we really shouldn't be in. Um, part of that debris is something you'd be familiar with. It's amyloid. Now, amyloid is the key driving factor in Alzheimer's disease, but it's also a key inflammatory factor in the eye. Those white deposits in the retina that you saw are actually quite amyloid rich and a part of an inflammatory process. So whoever painted this picture here, I can make two predictions about him or her. I can predict that probably he, was under the age, he or she was under the age of 40, 35, and I bet you he didn't, he or she, naturally slipping into that sexist he bit, he or she probably didn't have a problem with depositing diseases or inflammation. So let's look in our eye and let's deal with some of the problems that we have with inflammation. Um, inflammation can be dealt with in a number of ways. Um, this character over here is a macrophage. Now macrophages are part of our body's natural mechanism to deal with deposits and problems. When we've got a bad deposit, this guy comes along, he hoovers up the debris, and off he goes and leaves you with a nice clean carpet. The trouble with these guys is, as they say, they're like your kids, they can be absolutely charming, or they can be exceedingly irritating. You want them to come in, clean up the mess, and then clean out. One of the problems that we're getting in aging is these guys are coming into the environment, they're not cleaning up the mess, and they're generating as many problems as they're trying to resolve. Macrophages in large numbers, as we age, are bad news, and they cause inflammation themselves. This picture here just shows you a picture of deposition. Well, what deposits are like in the retina? Well, these individual tubes here are individual photoreceptors, and they're the things that capture, capture the light in your eye and turns that light signal into a message that the brain can understand. Now, they should be clean, but as you notice, they've got fur on them. 
That fur is a deposit, and, and it's an, an inflammatory deposit, and you definitely don't want it. Keep that picture in, keep that picture in your mind. Now, scientific pictures, scientific slides, they, they, they can be really bad news. So I'm going I'm to encourage you to follow your eyes to the things that I would like you to see, which is great because it stops you from being too critical. Um, but I'm going to warn you beforehand that the things I'm talking about are not patients, they're mice. Fundamentally, the majority of this is about mice, and you've got to keep your head firmly on that particular issue. I'd like to believe that there is a, a link and association between mice and us, but I suppose it depends on the person. Oops, let's go back here. Okay, so I'm looking into a mouse eye, a really old mouse eye. Mice, mice get older and older. Mice shouldn't live for more than three months. That's the evolutionary life of the normal mouse, mouse in the wild. 24 months, he's got these spots. We find out that these spots, when we look at them in detail, are our macrophages, and they're full of amyloid, which is going to give us grief. Here are these cells, and here's what happens to them in the eye as we, as we progress with age. The same is true in the human eye. Generally, with, with aging, we find a build-up of these deposits, a build-up of macrophages. Uh, the principles are relatively similar. This is a terrible slide for a general audience. But what this slide shows you is it shows you, we've shown you that macrophages increase. We're actually showing you that in different parts of the retina, as we age, as the mice ages, we're actually building up these really big, horrible inflammatory deposits. And just to sort of give a bit of information to those that are curious, we show this one way with this technique here, and we show it independently with another tech technique here. So, um, the vitamin D story, which um, I, I, should, I should make a couple of caveats very early on. Vitamins have very often been grossly oversold, and uh, I think a lot of companies have tended to make a lot of money out of them. And you're actually looking here at a refusenik when it comes to dietary supplements. Um, everything that I'm going to talk about um, has been replicated three times because the poor graduate student, when she came in and presented me with the data, I said, no, I don't believe it. Um, so uh, you have to bear in mind that many of the vitamin stories have been oversold. You have to bear in mind that the fundamental research has been done in mice. And you also have to fairly, really keep in mind the fact that if you want to translate this to a human situation, we need a lot of clinical trials. We need a lot of work on normal people, aged people, and people with disease. So that is very important. But the key points is that, okay, we get vitamin D from sunlight. You can get it from oily fish, you can get it from other sources, but the vast majority of vitamin D we get, we get from our sunlight. Okay, we evolved in Africa, for those of you that are prepared to believe the evolutionary story to which I'm, I am wedded. Um, over approximately three to four million years, we lived in Africa. Um, and during that period, we got 12 hours of sunlight every day. 12 hours exactly, because we live near the equator. Um, and it's only very recently that we've actually, it's extremely recently, that we've migrated away from that environment. Now, vitamin D, which is produced by sunlight, regulates, regulates our immune system, and low levels of it are associated with a wide range of diseases. In some senses, too many wider range of diseases, because it makes us very enthusiastic to come in and say, vitamin D is a panacea for everything, which I think we should be extremely cautious about. But it is associated with diabetes, it's associated with low levels associated with some forms of cancers. Um, and the key thing is that low levels are associated with something called length of your telomere. And to give you just a real crude grab on that, that is a predictor of lifespan. Okay? Interesting figure is that which really shocked me was when I visited a diabetic clinic um, in a teaching hospital in South London, is that 20% of the people in that clinic had unrecordable vitamin D levels. It's not that the levels are low, we can't find them. So let me give you another story as to why we're going down this pathway. We're going down this pathway because I am not, in a sense, doing original research. I'm treading in the steps of a group of people in the States who have been doing very, very similar things, and I'm going to do very, have done very things that I'm going to show you now. Um, looking at Alzheimer's disease, because many of the diseases of aging that we get in the eye and the brain share very, very similar characteristics. So, a mouse. 
a very, very old mouse. Um, oops, excuse me. And I'll try and make this as simple as I possibly can. Here is a very, very old mouse, and he has got horrible, big, spiky macrophages. And in the particular place I'm looking at, which is the very back of the eye, each mouse has got sort of round about 100 of them. Now, his brother was separated, and his brother was put on a relatively short burst of vitamin D. Now, these cells have actually got receptors for vitamin D. They're actually very sensitive to levels of vitamin D. And one of the things that we did with this was we reduced the aggressive macrophages down from about 80 to an eye to around about 15. We only, didn't only reduce them, we changed what they look like. This is rather a reactive macrophage. Um, it's, a, it's an inefficient vacuum cleaner, fundamentally. We associate it with in, inefficient clearing, whereas these guys here tend to be associated with more efficient cleaning. We know that macrophages are related to inflammation. Um, we've got our control old mouse up here, and we've got his uh, cohort, his brother down here, and we've measured the amount of inflammation, which is the green, and we actually see that the animal mouse that was on vitamin D has got reduced inflammation. Never happy proving so, or demonstrating thing, something one way, so we've demonstrated it another way, these white blodges of various bits of inflammation within the animal's eye, and again, it's been reduced by putting the animal on uh, a course of vitamin D. Amyloid, which is inflammatory, unpleasant. We've all got far too much of it in our brains. It's a byproduct of activity. Um, again, we get loads of it in old eyes, um, which we've measured here. And this is the animal that has actually been on a period of vitamin D. And we find a significant reduction. Try and look at it another way. Make sure we've got it right. Again, the control has got lots of white blobs in it. And the vitamin D treated brother has actually got a reduced series of blobs in him. So reduced amyloid, reducing inflammation. Now, I showed you those woolly, woolly bits on our photoreceptors. Our photoreceptors are really important. Um, as we get older, either through disease or through age, you're going to lose a large percentage of your photoreceptors. If you've got a perfectly normal eye, between the ages of 15 and the ages of 70, you will lose 20% of your photoreceptors just through age. You know, just, they generally go because we're living too long. If you've got a disease process that in some way restricts the goodies that these cells need to survive or restricts an aspect of their function, they'll go at an even faster rate. So you can actually easily, even within the normal population, you can extend that loss beyond 20 to 30%. As they age, they have a build-up of debris on them. The debris is really unpleasant for them. They don't like it. It causes a lot of inflammation. Um, so here's our control animal, um, and here's our animal here, which has had um, a treatment of vitamin D, and you can see the deposition has been largely cleared from the photoreceptor um, out of segment. One of the key things if you're trying to do a bit of research is you can describe loads of things that change in the body following a treatment. Some of them can be interesting. Some of them can strike you as being phenomenally interesting, but when you get to the end of the day, they're anecdotal. They actually don't carry any value. As a scientist, you want to look at something, you want to look at a structure, you want to change a structure, and the next question you want to ask is, have I changed function? This guy here, this is a measure of visual function. And what we've found is that the vitamin D people, mice, don't really improve at all at low levels. But as you turn the lights up, and with the lights are very bright, there's a difference between our control and our treated animals. The final bit of science here is, are we just talking about the eye? No, we're not talking about the eye. We give vitamin D as an injection to mice because they won't take it when we feed it to them. And this is the largest blood vessel in your body. It's the aorta. And in the aorta, as you age, you actually have lots of amyloid beta, the horrible deposits. And C3 there is an indicator of inflammation. And again, we find our mice, our normal mice here, they've got inflammation, they've got 
deposition, uh, the vitamin D treated animals are not like that. They're seriously reduced. So it's a systemic thing. It's not necessarily uh, just something for the eye. Okay, so I want to do a little demonstration. And I think three or four people in, you, in, in the audience have seen this before. And it's a demonstration with a bit of string. So the people that have seen the, seen the demonstration before, I'm sorry, you're seeing it again. But the really exciting thing is it's a new bit of string. Okay, because we had to cut the old bit of string up to repair a piece. Of, oh, that always happens. Let's um, see what you can do with that if you could. Okay, so the key point that I want to make, and, the, and it's an evolutionary point, is that we've evolved for millions and millions of years in Africa where we've got oodles of sunlight every day, predictably. It's only in the last 10,000 years that humans came out of Africa. And then they went somewhere really warm. They went to the Levant, they went to Asia, and they didn't spread out anymore. But in the last five to 10,000 years, they've come into Northern Europe, it's cold, we've worn clothes. The weather is absolutely awful. It's gray a lot of the time. Many of the people I work with during winter months, come into work when it's dark, leave when it's dark, and don't have direct access to sunlight. And they have unrecordable vitamin D levels. What's the bit of string? The bit of string, I think, brings this home. That length of string is the length of human evolution as far as we, not Neanderthals, we are concerned. It's about three to four million years. The whole of that length of bit of string, you've been in Africa, you've been getting oodles of sunlight, and you've not worn clothes. You have been getting lots and lots of vitamin D. Now, the red flag at the end, which actually, I'm sorry, it's really small. The red flag at the end is when you've moved into northern Europe, you've moved into an area where um, you're not getting much sunlight, and that is the reason that I believe we have a, probably have a vitamin D crisis. Interestingly, why aren't people in Norway suffering like crazy? I work in Norway a lot of the time for a completely separate reason. I've heard of reindeer that I work on and what they see in summer and what they see in winter and I ask all my Norwegian colleagues and they'll say, we eat fish livers all the time which are high in vitamin D or we take vitamin D. So two key things to really remember here that are very important. One is this is mice, it's not men. Secondly, there's no trial on humans, which I think is really important. So you have to take what I've said with a serious bit of salt, but at the same time, perhaps a small degree of imagination. Thank you.